So I'm here with Duke Scarter, who's CTO of Softlayer. And of course, the big news, Duke, is that you know, Softlayer has been acquired by IBM. And so a lot of people are obviously very excited to see IBM finally making a play in the public cloud. I think it's great news for them. But what does it mean for you? Uh, well, what, uh, what it means for Softlayer is an opportunity to be part of a, of a very large company that has a lot of uh, capital, a lot of push, and a very large interest in expanding its reach in the public cloud arena. And uh, that's obviously our goal in life is to get bigger and have that broader geographic expansion, which we believe will be a really great partnership with IBM. Now, there are lots of things that obviously you could do to take advantage of that, but what are some of the particular things that you feel software is best suited to do? I mean, I know, for example, we're dealing in an era now where it's pouring big data because of all the things that are happening in the cloud, sensor nets, collecting all this data, the amount of transactional data, et cetera. Is that an area of strength for you, and, and what are others that you might be able to take advantage of? It, it is. Uh, we, look at, uh, uh, we, look, we look at public cloud really as, as two key components of what we call internally the virtual public cloud yep. and the bare metal public cloud. Um, often we just call this public cloud and bare metal cloud. And uh, the public cloud is instantly scalable, multi-tenant environment driven by a hypervisor. It's kind of yep. what we all think of as cloud. Yep. Uh, but what our customers have come to uh, really like from us and rely on from us is our bare metal cloud. Um, and in our bare metal cloud, we give customers single tenant access to a server in our data center, which they can design uh, to their needs. So let's then design servers for databases, um, websites, uh, web, web servers, web heads, application servers of all different stripes. You know, the, the compute memory and storage needs of a video transcoder are very different from a database. They're very different, again, from a web head. Right. So uh, the ability to, to customize that hardware to their need and leverage it in uh, at the same time with our public cloud, our virtual public cloud, which gives them that instantaneous scale. And our bare metal cloud, we give them two hours scale. Not quite instant, it's pretty fast. Not quite instantaneous. But the important point is it's consistent infrastructure it's, across both. It, that's exactly right. It's consistent infrastructure, yep. uh, consistent, consistent control panel, yep. consistent network. So yep. all of the networking is the same, and our data centers are deployed the same. Um, and across our multiple data centers, we have a private network that connects all of them. Right. What that really does is that creates an environment that's perfect for a lot of the NoSQL uh, big data databases yep. that exist today that um, want you know, horizontal scale out, multiple data centers, but have a, a high degree uh, that you they require a high degree of uh, reliability on a network. Um, and consistency on the network connectivity between the servers within a data center, yep. as well as across the data center boundaries. So it's a perfect example of what our customers do with our platform. And now obviously IBM has a tremendous amount of offerings in this space. What was it that they were missing that you really brought that's sort of a little bit of the unique differentiation and secret source here in terms of this layer? Um, well, from our perspective, uh, uh, the ability to do both bare metal and public cloud is, is I think, key in what they're, uh, what they're their strategy. Yeah, they didn't have that. Yeah, yeah they, they didn't have that. Uh, it's fairly unique in the industry, actually. Most people yeah. really focus entirely on one on or the other. Cloud. Right. And with the bare metal cloud, we can do both equally well. Yeah. And so it just brings a, a high degree of. Um, there's, there's a lot of different directions you can go with that. You can deploy SaaS products on that. You can create public cloud products on that. You can create private cloud products on that. You can do a lot of different things with it. For so example, obviously, you you, uh, you will know in the survey that hybrid is is the sort of you know flavor du jour that people are expecting to really take over in five years. But there are lots of challenges with that. Can you talk a little bit about what you see happening in, in that world? Do you think it will end up being a very hybrid model, you know, mixed between these two? And if so, what are some of the challenges to that? Well, you, you know, if you look at hybrid, so there's uh, there's two ways we think of hybrid at software. One is a hybrid environment that consists of both public cloud, a virtual cloud, and bare metal cloud. Yep. I don't think that's quite what you're talking no. about. The other hybrid is on-premise, yep. private cloud, or just on-premise on yep. resources, and off-premise public cloud. Yep. And, you know, the, the reality is there, there are a lot of challenges there, networking challenges, connectivity challenges, yep. as well as manage manageability, ability. orchestration, yeah. et cetera. Orchestration, yep. how do you move workloads from one to the yep. other? Um, so the, the real question, I think, is to where, whether that's going to uh, become a reality is what the drivers are for a company to do yep. that. Um, you, well, they're often, as you know, they're often around things that have nothing to do with the cloud. That's their compliance and security and data yeah. privacy and all that kind of thing. The, the, that's right. Um, you know, so, so what would drive a company to go through all that effort um, and build a hybrid environment? Um, I, I think there are real challenges that are going to drive companies to do that. Data, data center constraints. 
um, constraints on capital purchases, things that typically have driven companies to the cloud, yep. but maybe large enterprises that have a lot of uh, presence already in their data centers, um, as they max out those resources, yep. you know, they begin to use the cloud instead of buying more data center or instead of refreshing their existing data center. So if that's one of the drivers, um, I think that's a matter of time. Yeah. You know, that's just a question of when, not if. Yeah. And and then the, all of those other problems we will solve as those um, those use cases become a reality. The more we talk to our customers, the more we understand what the real network needs are. Yeah. A lot of times when they come to us the first time, you know, they think it's A, B, and C. Yeah. Once we talk, they think it's a lot of security concerns or compliance issues. Once they understand our security model and our compliance and what they gain by being in our data center, those go by the wayside and it becomes much more about connectivity, right. speeds, reliability yeah. of, that, of that connectivity in. And then the manageability is a huge part of it. Yeah, very good. Well, it's great to hear you talk that way because I think that's actually what we've got to address as the industry. So thank you very much for taking the time Absolutely. today. And a pleasure working with you on the panel too.